In 2019, I dove quite literally headfirst into resin-based 3D printing. Previously, I thought that it was a little bit pricey and just inconvenient overall, but with the price of resin-based 3D printers going down, the cost of resin going down substantially, and the software getting better and better, I honestly thought that 2019 was the sweet spot, and as it's even evolving more, there's not really a better time to get into resin-based 3D printing. I love having access to the high quality, high resolution detail that resin-based 3D printers are able to achieve. And with the adaption of the LCD or MSLA based resin technology, printing is so easy, calibration is super simple, and you're able to yield much quicker results than you would with a traditional kind of laser based SLA 3D printer. Last year, there was an explosion of very small, low cost resin based 3D printers. It felt like every few weeks there was a new one coming out. Well. 2020 seems to be the year of larger form factor, uh, still desktop based 3D printers, and there has been quite a few that have come out this year so far. Now, when I say large form factor, I don't mean when you compare it to FDM 3D printing, where there's tons of machines that are one foot by one foot by 16 inches, like the CR10, but when you compare it to like the 115 by 60 by 180 millimeter build volume that a lot of the small form factor desktop resin printers are, these are pretty large machines. In today's video, we are gonna be taking a look at one of those larger form factor resin based 3D printers that's right behind me. This is the SaneSmart Kumitsu KL9. I've had this printer for a couple of weeks now. I've done quite a bit of printing and I am excited to share with you guys my results. Before you guys ask, yes, I will do a separate video where I do a side-by-side -side of the Kamitsu KL9 with the Elegoo Saturn, which is another larger form factor resin printer, which I know people are gonna ask me instantly, how do they compare? So that'll be a separate video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the uh, features or the technical specifications of the KL9. We're gonna talk about what my experience has been like, and of course, we're gonna do some 3D printing. I hope you guys are excited. Let's get right into the video. Now, I constantly keep my ear to the ground when it comes to 3D printing, always trying to stay up with the latest machines coming out. And I will say that the SaneSmart Kamitsu KL9 was not a machine that I'd ever heard of before. And I was really shocked that I had it when I saw what this printer offered. The build volume on the KL9 is 120 by 192 by 250 millimeters. So again, this is quite a lot bigger than the resin 3D printers that I've been uh, reviewing previously. Now this printer uses a 2560 by 1440 or 2K LCD screen. And essentially that's the resolution that you're gonna be able to get with this printer. Since on LCD based printers, the LCD screen is the actual mask that displays the image that's then being created by the UV light, that is again the detail that you're able to achieve with this printer. The Komitsu KL9 uses a parallel LED panel, which is something I've seen on other resin printers. It's supposed to help with the more uniform light shining, so that way your part is being carried evenly, no matter whether it's on the far left of the LCD screen or on the far right of the LCD screen, or in this case, on your build plate. SaintSmart does claim that their LCD screen does have some special heat dissipation, which is supposed to help extend the life of the LCD screen. Now, of course, on resin-based 3D printers that are MSLA, the LCD screen, the FEP, and the resin are typically the three main consumables that you're going to be needing to replace. The KL9 does have an extremely rigid Z-axis and the plate is riding up and down on dual linear rails, which is awesome. That means that it's really rigid, it's really precise, and there's no 
There's no fluctuation or wobble of the z-axis, which is incredibly important for the high precision and detail that you'd expect of a printer like this. The KL9 also uses Chitubox, which I am super thankful for. That has become my standard for all resin 3D printing, and I almost dread having to use other slicers. So again, if you've got another smaller form factor resin printer um, that you've been playing around with, then Chitubox is likely what you've been using, and fantastic news, you don't have to learn another slicer. It is fully compatible with Chitubox, and that is the slicer, uh, slicer of choice for the KL9. Now, if you own a resin-based 3D printer, if you've ever seen how one is typically set up, at least LCD-based ones, this is no different. Essentially, you're going to level the build plate, fill up the vat with resin, and you are off to the races. All in all, setup is about 15 minutes on this machine, so it is really, really painless, and uh, I'm super thankful for that. This printer does come with quite a few accessories, such as spatulas, little clippers, some gloves. However, like many other resin printers, it does not come with resin, so if you order this printer, make sure you order a couple bottles of resin, otherwise you are going to be super disappointed when you get this set up, and you have to look at it for a few days while you wait for your resin to show up. Sane Smart was awesome enough to send me one liter of their black standard resin, which showed up in like a canteen or like a hydro flask. It's by far the most heavy duty uh, resin bottles I've ever seen. And talking about design overall, the Kumitsu KL9 is hands down one of the sexiest resin-based 3D printers I've ever used. Um, from my experience, most resin-based 3D printers are just like a rectangular box with not a lot of design or thought put into it. And you can clearly see on the KL9 that design was not a afterthought. That was something they thought of at the time of creating this machine. And Honestly, it's something I'm thankful for. If that goes to say anything, they put the additional effort into making sure not only that this machine is going to perform and has the specs that you'd expect, um, but it also has the design and overall look of a high quality machine. The Komitsu KL9, again, is built very well. It feels like a very rigid machine. On the front of the printer, you've got a nice little touchscreen LCD panel along with the USB port, which is awesome. This might seem like a small deal, but for most 3D printers or resin-based 3D printers, the micro SD card or the USB flash drive is somewhere super inconvenient. On the original Elegoo Mars, you've got the flash drive on the back of the printer, which just makes no sense. Or on a lot of machines, it's on the right side or left side of the printer, which is better, but still makes your printer take up additional space. On this one, it is on the front of the machine, and it's also on the front of the machine out of the way of the LCD screen. <laughs> Elihu. Um, there, I'll talk about that later on, but um, the USB and the LCD screen are placed in beautiful spots where they are easily accessible and out of the way so you can navigate the touch screen without bumping the flash drive. And again, seems small, but believe me, this is not a standard for all resin 3D printers. Also, most resin-based 3D printers have like a rocker on and off switch on the back of the printer. This machine has a beautiful bright power button on the front that's got red LEDs around it, so it's really easy to access, turn on and off the printer. Other than that, the side of the printer's got just open holes for venting out heat, and on the back of the printer, we've got a relatively large exhaust port, you've got the uh, power plug port input, and you've got an ethernet cable. Now, I will say that SaneSmart has not said anything to me, and their instructions do not talk about network compatibility. Personally, it is not something I care about in a resin 3D printer, and I definitely don't have any plans to hook up ethernet, but as of right now, it seems like it's more of an afterthought, and perhaps this will be available in a future firmware update, but again, there was no there was no mention of the Ethernet port in the instructions, and this is not something I tested out because for someone uh, like me and a lot of people, honestly, I don't think that that's a huge deal having Ethernet compatibility. Um, putting your files on a flash drive is plenty easy, and I think that for most of us, that's really the method we're going to be using anyway. So once the printer was all set up, I went ahead and popped the flash drive into the front of the printer. I poured about half of that of the black resin, and I checked to see if there was any uh, demo or, or uh, test files on the flash drive. There was the standard little Rook. There was uh, two other ones as well. One of them said Dragon Head and of course that had me. So I had to print the Dragon Head first. Um, it did take quite a while. Off the top of my head I want to say it was around five-ish hours and it wasn't a very big part. So the reason why I think it took so long is I believe they sliced it at 25 micron which the test files typically have like the highest resolution possible, so that way they can kind of showcase what the machine's capable of, and it did turn out beautiful. You can see here from the footage that this tiny little dragon head had an incredible amount of detail. Sticking with the theme of dragons, Photos Mint, who is an awesome 3D modeler that I talked about in a previous video, has a fairy dragon, which is this epic dragon perched 
and it's got fairy wings. And so I wanted to print out this thing full size. I went ahead and hopped over to Chitubox and Chitubox does not have a built-in profile for the Kumitsu KL9. However, there's a PDF included with the printer as well as a little booklet that has the settings. So it took all but two minutes to populate the couple of fields for this printer. And I had a profile in Chitubox. So I did that really quickly. I dragged in the fairy dragon. I scaled it, I hollowed it, I added supports and I hit print. For this file and all the files I sliced and printed, I did it at 50 microns. Again, for me, that's a standard. 25 microns is super overkill for all the stuff I do, and 50 microns just looks absolutely insane, again, like I mentioned earlier, without sacrificing too much build time. So this was a fairly long print, roughly about 14-ish hours, and it turned out insane. This was my first time using solid black resin, and I gotta say, damn does it look good and this dragon turned out absolutely amazing um, just looking at the details on it i was totally blown away so once that print was done i went ahead and wanted to fill the whole build plate so i found this massive mug that's supposed to hold a can um, i found a dental scan of some teeth because resin based 3d printing is used a lot in the medical field and uh, definitely the dental as well and i could definitely see this in like a medical or dental office um, i also went ahead and found a uh, camera mount or camera housing for the uh, light burn camera I have for my CO2 laser. I saw that Chris Russell had posted a video or a photo of it on Twitter. So um, I knew I had to print that out. I sliced up everything. And again, this was covering the whole build plate and I hit print. All in all, this was about a 16 hour print as well. I woke up the next morning, went into my office to see how it was going and panicked seeing that there was literally no resin left in the vat and I was out of the black resin. So I grabbed another resin that I had some uh, frozen resin from when I was reviewing their printer, poured it in there and luckily the mug was able to complete with their resin instead of the black resin that it originally had started out with. Overall, everything turned out really good. The only thing that failed was one of the parts for the light burn camera housing. However, after I went back to Chitty Box, I looked at the supports and saw that the auto generated supports were not in all the right places. This is just a reminder and I do this with FEM printing. I need to get better with resin printing, but always, always, always look at the auto generated supports because yes, Chitty Box does a pretty damn good job, but in situations like this, there was a full part of the uh, housing that just was not supported at all. And so I had to manually go in and add a couple supports. I went ahead and reprinted the whole housing in the new mixed color, which was like a gray color and it turned out perfect. It turned out absolutely just amazing. So one thing I didn't talk about was pricing. This machine retails at 999, so roughly a thousand bucks, which I know is a lot more than small form factor resin 3D printers. It's actually about three-ish even plus times the amount of cost, which is going to put it outside of the realm of a lot of just hobby uh, hobbyists that are wanting to pick up a resin printer for fun, which is why I think that this machine is more gonna be targeted towards small businesses, like people looking to do small batch production, prototyping, um, prop makers that are doing it more on a professional level. I certainly think that um, this is an awesome machine that kind of bridges the gap between those really, really low cost machines and an expensive like three or $4,000 form labs machine. So at $1,000, yes, it's a lot more than those um, lower price point machines, but still significantly less for someone that needs that bigger build volume or needs to be able to print out um, more parts at the same time because again since lcd based printers take the same amount of time whether you print out one part or 50 parts you can load up the tray with something that you sell and it'll take just as long to print out a whole batch versus just one or two and that is awesome again for someone that's got a small business or a part that they're looking to make and be able to sell so i wanted to see how this printer would do with kind of small batch production if you're using it in that environment for a part that you're going to be printing over and over and over again and selling so I went online, I found for the DJI Mavic Mini uh, 2, these little thumb guards. So for the controller, when you're traveling, it basically connects them together, makes it where if they were to get bumped, you wouldn't damage them. So I loaded up the tray with four of them. I probably could have fit five, but it was almost a full tray. I hit print. Two hours later, I had a beautiful tray of four of these parts. I went ahead and hit print again. Two hours later, I had four more. I hit print again. Two hours later, I had four more. So. I had 12 of these printed out in six hours and they all looked amazing. I mean, again, if this was something I was looking to sell, it certainly would have passed the uh, inspection test on my end. And that's why I think that, again, this machine is going to shine for someone that needs a 
uh, kind of more serious resin printer for small batch production where those smaller form factor resin 3D printers just aren't going to fit the bill. So if you've been looking for a larger resin 3D printer, then this definitely is a certainly a contender. Um, the only thing about this printer that if I had one thing I would uh, mention is that the exhaust fan is quite a bit louder than what I'm used to on smaller resin based 3D printers. The LCD screen does generate a lot more heat because of its size, so it does need more um, air to be removed from the printer. But again, this is something that I thought I would note. I'm sure for most people, including myself, it's not a huge deal at all, but Audio seems to be one thing that really bugs a lot of people when it comes to um, 3D printing. They always ask, you know, how loud is it though? Can I keep it in my office? I would say yes, you can keep this in your office for sure, but just expect to be able to hear a fan in the background. So um, anyways, guys, this has been the Sane Smart Kumitsu KL9. Um, I, again, will be doing a comparison of this to the Elegoo Saturn. I know lots of people are going to be asking me. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe for more great videos. I make uh, content every single Saturday, so there's tons of fresh new stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see you guys in my next video. Once again, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I hope you're all doing fantastic. And if you want to find out more about this machine, links will, of course, be down below in the description. On that note, I'm out. Peace, guys.